Hi, Trapness here. Welcome to my 28 Days Later music production course where I will be teaching you everything you need to know to become a full-time music producer from creating entire songs to developing your own brand and creating a business plan. During the last video, I talked about what mixing is at its core and how to prepare your song for mixing. And today I will show you how to set up the right volumes to start your mix. If you are new to these videos, please make sure to check all the other videos in this course. That way we can be on the same page. If you like these videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram for more content like this. The very first thing that I would recommend you do is just move all the clips from the session view into the arrangement view. The reason is that in the arrangement view, you can just jump around the song and select whatever part you want to play. If you play the clips in the session view, they are going to play from the beginning and it's really problematic to mix like that. So you're just going to select all the clips and you can just do copy and paste into the arrangement view. Now we are going to select with our selector bar the area that I want to mix. So. To start mixing, I want to know what are going to be the main elements on my mix. As I explained in my last video, we are going to mix around the kick and the bass line because those are the two loudest elements in this genre. I'm just going to start at the beginning of the first verse. It really doesn't matter. Once I have selected the area, I'm going to click on the loop option. That way this part of the song is going to be playing over and over and over again. Okay, let's go back to our session view and now I'm going to turn off every other track in the song. I want only the kick and the 808 for now. Now, before we start mixing, we have to know what's our objective with this task. In this case, we first have to make sure that we meet our headroom. The headroom is the space between the loudest peak in your sound and zero dBFS. That is like, think of it like a ceiling. If you go over that ceiling, then you're gonna have problems. As a rule of thumb, minus 6 dB is where your song should be peaking. To know how loud your sounds are, you have this meter. You can extend this by placing your cursor right here and then you can just make this bigger. I'm gonna mute the 808. And the way to tell exactly how much are you going over is watching in this, this number here. So we see that our kick is reaching minus 3 dB. That's not bad, but let's get close to minus 6 as possible. Now, once you change the level, it will reset back to zero. So now let's see how loud it is. Okay, right now it's peaking at minus 6.19, which is good enough. So now let's introduce the 808. Okay, that level is good, but if you notice, there's one moment where the bass goes really loud and throws the song completely off. So when you have sounds that, that change in volume, don't worry much about that because that's something we can fix with compression. For now, let's just make sure that our sounds remain below minus 6 dB. Okay, so the next element will be the melody. Let's go with the main melody. <laughs> Okay, I feel like minus 6 dB is a good level for our main melody. Let's go with the piano melody. Now let's go back to the arrangement view and select an area where we have that piano melody. Okay, I feel like minus 4 dB is a good level for our piano. I just noticed something that 
for some reason we named this the synth lead. This should be the melody piano. Now let's go to our next element that will be the harmonies during the hook. So we're gonna move to the hook area. And now remember, during the hook, we have different drums uh, than for the verse. In this case, let's mix the drums to what already exists. So I'm gonna lower the volume of these drums a little bit and try to adjust it until I get to the ideal volume. <laughs> Okay, that level is fine for now. Uh, I want to just check the loudness during the verse and during the hook and see if the transition doesn't feel too, too abrupt. Okay, so I feel like the drums during the hook are still a little bit too loud, so we're maybe set up to minus 8 dB. Okay, that sounds much better. Now let's turn on the harmony and let's go back to our session view. Now remember, the harmony needs to be more like in the background. It's a supportive element to the melody, both the main melody and the piano melody. So let's go ahead and reduce the volume of this a lot. Okay, I'm happy with that. The next step is just to try to set the volume for the elements that come only at certain parts. Like for example, during the bridge, we have our main melody for the piano. And during the bridge, I definitely want this piano solo to be a little bit louder just because I don't want that abrupt change in the volume of the song as a whole. I'm gonna apply some automation here. Let's go to audio effects and I'm gonna type utility. At this point, all you need to know about utility is that it's a tool that is really convenient to setting up automations. I'm going to right click on the gain knob and select show automation. Now, once you're ready to automate a parameter, you will read it right here. It's the utility tool and you're gonna automate specifically the gain. Now let's select our point A and point B from where I want that change to happen. And I'm gonna increase like three dBs. Let's try with that. Okay, I like that. Maybe I'm gonna just reduce it one dB. Yes, I like that much better. Remember, there are guidelines to mixing, but there's no an exact formula on how you have to approach every single mix because every song is different. The last element that we need to mix is just the lead synth. So here I want to change the color to the same one as in my track. Good, just to avoid confusions, I'm going to zoom out and let's select the lead part here. So you see the lead at this point is completely drowning everything else. A really nice trick I learned from a book for mixing is once you're gonna mix a new element, let's try different volume settings. So we are going to start from zero. We are gonna close our eyes 
and I'm gonna raise the volume little by little. Right now I have minus 11.5 dB. Now I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna play it really loud and lower the volume until I get comfortable with the sound. I have minus eight and minus 11.5. I'm gonna try to find the middle ground and those that will be around minus 9 dB. Don't forget to, when you automate something, that sound will need to go back to its original level. So, so I'm just gonna select here the point A and point B and now nah, problem solved. Now let's listen the transition from the bridge into the last hook. Okay, I like the volume of the lead, but I feel like it's just a little bit too loud. So I'm gonna reduce to minus 10 dB and that should be good. At this point, we only need to mix our effects. Now I want to mix all the effects as a whole because I don't really care about how loud they sound individually. So I'm gonna select both tracks and I'm gonna right click and create a group. This is known as bus. A bus is pretty much a group of tracks. This way I can control the volume much easier. Okay, so all that is left at this point is just to listen the song as a whole whatever bothers you you can tweak it but don't change too much so that will be all for today i hope you learned a lot from this video remember mixing is a process and as any other process it can be broken down into different elements so when you're mixing don't just try to do everything at once go by stages and you're gonna get much better results than otherwise if you have any questions at all please let me know in the comments subscribe to my youtube channel and follow me on instagram for more content like this and i'll see you in the next one